Hi kids, it's Anjana back with you on Learn Forward platform with your computer book and this is your video number 2 of Coding and Computing Skills, Grade 8, Chapter number 1, Networking. We have already learned a lot about networking in the previous video and we move ahead with learning what are the different types of network. So, depending on the geographical area covered by the network, there are various types of computer networks which are used worldwide and we are going to talk about them. So, coming to the first one, we say it is personal area network. What is personal area network, children? It stands for the centered around the individual user and it covers very small area. Now, Bluetooth is the example of the short range wireless pan. You know, when you turn on the Bluetooth of your mobile or your TV, it covers the certain area and it connected, it gets connected with the other hardware devices which are uh, around them. So, this is uh, having certain range like 10 meters only. So, this is one of the example of personal area network. Coming to the local area network, this is a private network that operates within the organization. Now what happens, this is a specific type of network that connects computers and different peripheral devices which exist in the same building. And LAN is widely basically used in the small offices, in the schools even and here LANs cover the small area and it is connected by the cable or even with the low power radio signals, they get connected to each other. So, we have like home router is there and with home router, you are connecting your printer, desktop, even laptop, cell phone. This is then you have your gaming console, you get connected to it, you have your DVD, LED and these all are connected to it. So, this is the example of your local area networking. Coming to a campus area network, you know big organizations, big school, colleges have their own entire campus. So, as the name amplifies the campus area network, it covers the group of building like group of institutes are there, group of colleges are there and even the office campus, we go for the campus area network and it is basically the collection of land spread over various buildings. So, we have one building here, then we have suppose hostel attached to it, we have a library and the entire campus has different different building and there you want the networking to be done, we do it with the help of campus area network. Moving ahead, we come to MAN, that is metropolitan area network which covers larger area in compared to your CAN and it is basically used to connect the number of LANs together. So, this type of network is used to connect the computers with the different offices of the organization in the same city. Here we do not have one entire campus, but say, uh, say one we have the school building at one place, then we have another, another part of the building, say primary wing is there, one senior wing is there, one middle wing is there. So, these buildings are at the different locations and we want the connectivity between these offices, then we go for the MAN metropolitan area networking, okay. Moving further, we come to the next topic that is WLAN, that is called wireless local area network. So, as the name suggests, it has radio signals instead of your cables to connect the different computers in the networking. So, w, uh, this WLAN is widely used these days, especially in even in the homes, in offices and at the center of WLAN is a wireless router. We call this as the access point, okay. And the access point is used to just send and receive the data from the computers in the network. And this wireless network is supposed to be secured with certain password so that its signals are not taken and the connectivity is not taken by the area where its signals are actually re reaching. 
So, we have this access point and this access point is giving the connectivity to different workstation which are wireless which are not connected to this workstation with any wire connectivity. So, only the person who has its password is able to access it. Got it? Then we come at wide area network children. Wide area network covers very large area like when you talk about a big city or continent or even the country and this type of network is used to connect the computer in various different cities in the country or even across the world. Now WAN connects the computer and the LANs in different cities or countries with the help of telephone wires. Even you know this is done with the help of satellites and fiber optic cables at times. So the re receiver is used to, the repeater is used in the WAN to extend the signal over certain distance and the Ethernet is the very good example of WAN which is used nowadays. Then we talk about this Wi-Fi. What is Wi-Fi? We have been using, everyone use Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi stands for wireless fidelity and this is your symbol for Wi-Fi. Everyone knows it when you see it on your laptop or your phone. It was basically developed for the mobile devices such as which the mobile devices means the devices which you could move. So it's not stably placed at one place. So that the exchange of data through the computer network becomes easy. And now it is widely used by all your PCs, even your smartphones, tablets, laptops, palm tops and even with your digital audio players. Coming to the network architecture, Children, network architecture refers to the overall design of the computer network and it shows how the computers are connected and how different tasks are allocated in the network. So, there are different types like two types are there of network. One is the client server architecture. So, when you talk about the client server architecture, we have a central authority given to the server and different clients are attached to it. And here the server provides the data that is to be shared by all the computers. They are the subcomputers, we call them as clients. And the clients are just service requesters and just rely on the server. If the server is not working, these clients are not able to access any information. This is called client server access. Coming to peer to peer architecture. So, in peer-to-peer -peer architecture, we don't have any centralized uh, server to provide the connectivity and each workstation has equal files and they are being shared equally with each other. So, everyone is sharing the information like from this system, the information is reaching to every system, right? And similarly, they are connected to each other, okay? Similarly, from this system, the information is reaching here, here. See, it's reaching everywhere, okay? So, that means they are so connected that everyone is transmitting the data to each other. And thus, each workstation act as a client also and each workstation works as a server also. And this is very, very successful in case where you have the connectivity of different terminals working at a very high customer clientage access like in banking or you talk about your airport reservation, railway line reservation, there we use this peer-to-peer -peer architecture. Then coming to the network topologies, network topology, what does it mean? It means the physical layout or the diagram of the connected devices in the computer network. It is just schematic description of the arrangement of the network including its nodes and connecting lines. So there are a number of ways in which the network connection can be set up. Some very commonly used network topologies are here. The first one is print to print that is PTP topology and it is simplest, the most conventional model of the topology when we talk about P 
PTP topology, here two nodes are directly linked to each other and in this topology, the dedicated link is transferred between the two devices. So, it is very fast and reliable and this network is used for small areas where we could have a close proximity of the data transfer from one uh, instrument to another one. So, here the data from these two devices are immediately transferred from one node to another. Then we come to bus topology. So, in bus topology what happens is all the network devices that is all the nodes are connected to one single cable. This is one single cable and with this one single cable we have connectivity and we call see this is looking like T. So, we call them T connectors. Okay. What is the advantage of this network topology? It is very easy to set up for all the devices and then the main network cable is also connected to it. We have one network cable and all are connected to the single network cable. Okay. And what is the disadvantage? The disadvantage is that if there is one breakage somewhere, so all the nodes just immediately stop working and the entire setup will be dead. It will not work like <coughs> the connectivity has stopped. So no data transmission is done to any of the wires. Then coming to another topology that is called ring topology. So ring the word suggests it is looking like a ring. So here we have a ring topology and the word ring topology here each node has two neighboring uh, nodes for the communication. So this one is sending the information to this and this. Similarly, this is sending the information to this and this. This is sending information to this and this and entirely it is forming a complete circle and we see the shape of the ring is created. Okay. So, the advantage of this network is that the flow of information take place only in one direction. Either it goes clockwise or it goes anti-clockwise from each node. Okay. But there is disadvantage also. Disadvantage is that this network, if there is a break in the cable or node, it will break the entire network and all systems will just become dead instead of affecting or harming one of the flow of the data. Then comes star topology. Here we have one hub and this hub is connected to different nodes. So here if what happens is in this topology, you just need to fix the faulty connection wherever there is a breakage. So, suppose there is a breakage in this, other nodes are not getting affected by the breakage happened to any one of the system. Okay. And then we come on the mesh topology. So, this is the image of children mesh topology. Here each node is connected to every other in the form of network. Can you see this node? This node is connected to other nodes look like this. Similarly, you look over here, it is again connected to other nodes. So, every node is having a linkage with other nodes and then the break in the cable or device may not affect the entire network as it happens in case of other topologies. And best topology is the best choice when you want the reliability of your network. Now moving to tree topology children. In tree topology some nodes act as the individual servers and they have their branches. So it has the branch over here. Now this becomes a server it has a branch over here. Like I will tell you the example suppose this is the server in your school which is with your administrator. Now administrator is sending the direction to different wings. This is the main wing, like primary wing, this is the secondary wing. So these are under the control of the coordinators. Now this coordinator is going to connect and leave the instructions for the teachers under this uh, particular wing. 
Similarly, here we have the senior wing. Senior wing has other teachers connected to it and these will be the connectivity for the uh, like source of information for their sub branches. Okay. And this way we have learned about different types of networking and topologies, how they work. Still more to learn. Stay connected. We'll get connected in the next video, video number three of the same chapter. Till then, goodbye and happy learning.